So uh, part seven, I'm going to introduce some color to the severed heads. Uh, the cooler colors, I've got some deep bruised purple and some Payne's gray, which will be introduced on that side of the face. So the side that's going to catch the moonlight. Uh, so it'll be all the cooler colors. The idea behind the, the mix that I'm doing now is to get my Payne's gray at a touch of deep bruised purple, which will darken that gray up. But not only that, will um, also help to introduce the violet color that seems to be uh, present in the, the reference picture. So that will be a, a good base to work with, I figured. So basically the same techniques as I've been doing with the, the sepia. It's all about a slow build up over reduced. And while the paint's still wet here, I've um, got my fan tip brush just to try and create some uh, some strokes to give the effect of hair. So um, it didn't work that well as uh, like I said sometimes it doesn't scratch off that easy when the paint's drying so but um, it gave me something to work with. See, I've uh, readjusted that eye. I had the eye too far in before, so uh, I've readjusted that out, put it where it's supposed to be. As you can see, that that mix that I've I've come up with can go quite dark. Um, so there's very seems to be a lot of contrast on that side of the face, and um, because of the extreme light source, um, and obviously the. The, uh, the detail in, in the head, um, there's lots of um, creases and um, lots of interesting detail in it that um, has a lot of contrast, so it's quite an effective uh, mix that. And you'll see later on what I mean about the, the violet mix when I um, overlay a red violet over the face, it just it helps react with the, the base colour a lot better when now now that I have my uh, deep bruised purple in that mix. You see that's darkening up quite fairly quick. So. And just uh, Drawing in some some of their rope fibers using the sharpened end of the paintbrush and the eraser. For the moment, this mix is not as over reduced as the um, the sepia was to begin with, so it's probably a about sixty percent paint, forty percent reducer, um, because I want to be able to. Um, like I mentioned before, I want to be able to lay down some thicker lines, some more solid lines. Oh, sorry, and I was wrong about the eye. That was in the wrong spot, and here's where I fix it up. <laughs> so, yeah, eyes a little bit too close together, and now they now everything's right. So, that's the um, the issue I was having with the way I'd set up my reference, because my reference is actually to the to my left, probably about. Uh, probably a good 500 um, mil away, 50 centimeters away, um, on a tablet. So, you know, I'm having to continually look to my left at something further away than what my artwork is. So my, you know, you've got to keep that fresh in your mind as you try and revert that back onto the, onto your artwork. So, yeah, mistakes were made, but that's fine. That's uh, it was an easy fix that one. So. Yeah, I'm just darkening some of the features up using that uh, that same mix. So once you start scratching those details in, it um, really starts to come alive. Just the, the contrast really, really helps it to stand out. And 
and if anything's a little bit too sharp like some of the details that I've scratched in are a little bit too sharp I can fix them up with the airbrush putting you know come in with white again all right so back to the sepia because I want to try and blend these two colors together um, obviously they don't they don't mix too well um, the sepia has a yellow base yellowish kind of a base to it um, whereas my Payne's grey has a bluish uh, bluish undertone to it so just got to be careful not to drift the colors across too much because uh, may end up with a an ugly sort of a muddy I guess it would almost be a, a fluoro yellow kind of look so just got to be a little bit careful there not to not to wash the colors across too much getting in pretty close uh, getting in really close just eliminates that overspray as well which is good um, another technique is you can kind of angle the airbrush away from the area you don't want the overspray so you know at the moment I'd probably want to angle the airbrush a little bit more to face right so that any overspray is going to drift across the um, all the sepia work rather than the, the blue and the violet that I just laid down but being that my air pressure is so low um, running at about 25 psi and I'm only opening the trigger very very slightly there's not going to be a lot of um, paint coming out anyway so overspray is not too much of an issue it's all about control and practice basically it's, uh, just comes with with time I learnt from many, many mistakes. So I've switched back to that, um, that same blue tone there, the uh, Payne's Grey with the deep bruised purple in it. Just to introduce some more of that colour into the to that side. Now that I've brought that sepia across a bit more, I um, it's kind of given me a boundary to work to. And while I'm I've got that colour in there, I've noticed you just notice little bits and pieces in the other side of the face that have you know got a little bit of that blue tint to it. So I'm just adding that where needed. Sort of study your reference and. You know, check out you know the other areas to see if that light is is uh, carries on through the the rest of the image. So trying to work in a lot of the um, rope fibers there. There's um, a few ropes holding those heads together. So um, trying to get the effect of a you know the fiber look. You see it's slowly getting darker uh, using the same technique where I, I just build it up slowly get darker and darker and um, as I want to lay more you know darker lines uh, I'll just uh, increase the paint ratio so just uh, be less re less reduce some more paint so I might add a you know a couple of drops of Payne's gray to one drop of uh, deep bruised purple so here I just want to add some highlights and soften up some of the highlights I've scratched in. So uh, I've got some white in the airbrush. Um, probably not really ready for this point yet, but sometimes I like to jump ahead, as I've mentioned in the previous videos. Um, just it just helps me to see what's going on. And see there, I just added some um, 
some ha more hair with the um, white paint rather than scratch it in. I've decided to paint that hair in. Um, it just sort of it blends a little bit better into the piece because it's a little bit of a softer, softer look to it. So here I am just adding some highlights. The good thing about this at the moment is I'm, I'm using the white on over the Payne's Grey and the Deep Bruce Purple. Um, and because I'm using a fairly over reduced mix, as I'm laying it down, the base colour of the Deep Bruce Purple and Payne's Grey um, sort of comes, it comes through that white mix. So I am getting a severe blue shift, which is usually, you know, not, not something we want. But in this particular circumstance, it actually um, it, it does serve serve a good purpose um, because obviously you know that's um, it ties in with that colour scheme on that side of the head, um, and I can always come in over top of that and and add a brighter white as well. But um, for now, having that blue colour bleed it bleed in through the white, that's actually um, it's what I'm after. I've still got that same same mix, but I'm notice I'm actually I switched airbrushes because um, the paint was running really rough at this stage. I um, I couldn't get it running pro properly through my HPSB the side feed, so I thought I'll give the um, CH a go HPCH, um, but it uh, yeah it wasn't running well at all. So I did later realise it wasn't actually my airbrushes, it was the, the paint. I'm thinking I got a bad batch because um, I tried numerous things to get the paint running well. Um, I, I tried filtering it, uh, filtering it numerous times before I eventually put it into the airbrush. Um, and it still just, it just won't run. It um, just keeps getting caught up in the, the airbrush. It's like it's almost got little dry flakes in it. So. Um, just seems to be a bad batch which uh, happens from time to time cheap enough to to buy another bottle a little bottle goes a long way so I probably will end up throwing these bottles out because they're, they're probably no good I actually bought a um, a sepia and a Payne's grey and they both yeah they both don't seem to run very well So a little bit further on I actually switched back to the I had a little bit of the old sepia left over so I thought I'd just try that and um, once I put that in it was yeah the, the difference was amazing it just ran so smooth um, and that paint was actually um, I think probably three or four years old now so and it's still running beautiful so um, yeah the paints last a while but um, obviously you know, I just got a bad batch with the the latest ones that I bought, which I uh, bought probably a couple of months ago. So I'm still trying to add texture in here. Um, like I said previously, I um, use an on-off on -off technique with the trigger when introducing these colours, um, even on the base coat because it actually it lays down a nice textured base um, so as I pass over that with more color layer it I layer it over on top and um, those textures come through and actually uh, yeah, help help build up the um, you know the 3d look essentially it's um, the depth Yeah, I was um, really struggling to get some details with this paint at the moment. It was, um, yeah, it wasn't really, wasn't working well. So what you probably don't notice is uh, me stopping and starting a lot. Um, that's me cleaning the tip of the brush and trying to back flush the airbrush to try and dislodge some of that um, some of the gunk that's clogging up the airbrush but um, yeah as many times as I did that 10-15 you know, seconds later it, it was blocked again so I yeah 
had a real tough time with this paint. Probably notice I haven't actually finished the chainmail properly. Um, I I really wanted to get stuck into the the severed heads here just so that I could I had something to to work against. Um, it's a lot easier to see what you're doing when you've got something to contrast against. So now that uh, well once these heads are done, I can then go back in and I can um, detail the chainmail and darken darken it up a little bit. And that way I've got something to, like a, you know, I've got something to work with so that I can see how dark I need to go. It's, um, you know, it's all about the contrast really. Just try and add some of that texture in with the the eraser because it was a little bit hard to create texture with the airbrush while it was um, while it wasn't running that well. There we are, just adding some shadows back into the chainmail just to set it back a little bit further so you notice that adding that little bit of a uh, little bit of a shade little bit of shade actually helped to bring the heads forward and push the the chainmail back um, just for that depth and now adding the um, the highlights that I'm doing at the moment with the eraser and the, the sharpened end of the paintbrush that just brings the heads out a little bit more again so really really good way of um, creating depth so I've got a really really small dash of uh, the deep bruised purple in the Payne's Grey so it's there's not much in there at all it's mostly Payne's Grey Just what well, doesn't matter too much because, like I said, I'm going to introduce a, a red violet later on. Um, that will it'll, it'll just be a it'll just create a purple effect once laid over top of that paint's grey anyway. Obviously, a, a blue and a red create purple, so paint's grey has the blue in it. The red violet has the red in it, so. See, there's a fair bit of texture in there. Some nice bright spots too that I just erased in. Sorry about the hand getting in the way, it's kind of an awkward uh, spot to have the camera I guess. Trying to create texture and hands getting in the way. really see now that um, now that I've got all that uh, those details blocked in it's really really brought that uh, you know brought that alive now it's uh, it's quite effective 
really help to blend it into the whole piece as well. So back on the sepia, just to try and bring those colours closer together again. You see I've got a really strong mix of paint in there at the moment. I'd probably su suggest it to be 70% paint, maybe even 80%, um, just so that I can really add that uh, those dark lines in there, um, just for the contrast. Now it's um, a little bit harder to create detail with a thick mix, but um, at the moment it's all about um, blocking in some of those uh, really dark areas. Uh, work the detail in with a, an over reduced mix as I as I progress. So now just dusting some of that sepia across the rest of the face, just very, very lightly. I don't want to go too hard on it. Um, that just sets up that that uh, colour to lay my orange over top. Because the sepia has a, um, a yellowish base, the orange wash that I put over there will really help, you know, really blend in well with that, that base colour. come back in and knock in some of those highlights again using the um, the arrays of the paintbrush and the blade there trying to work in some hair but didn't really work the paint was a little bit too dry so it wasn't you know wasn't scratching evenly but that's fine I can come back in a little bit later and draw some hair in with the airbrush it's probably going to match a little bit better too using the airbrush <laughs> 